Again, thank you all for joining us today. My name is Tim Begonis. Uh, I'm the CMO of DTools. With me is Seth Enos, our System Integrated Product Manager. And uh, we're going to cover today the new features in System Integrator 2018. Some housekeeping. Uh, if you haven't been on a webinar with us before, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Very simple. Um, we will be presenting. You have a, a dialogue on the right side of your screen, which will allow you to um, and ask questions. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. But as we go through the presentation and you have questions, feel free to go ahead and enter them into the questions log. Um, and uh, we will do our best to answer them during the presentation, but we will have a dedicated time at the end to answer these questions. Uh, if you need to uh, see more of the viewing area up in the right-hand corner of your screen, there's a little arrow uh, pointing to the right. Go ahead and click that. That will hide the control panel and give you um, better screen viewing. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is a brief overview of the new features and enhancements in our latest version, which is SI 2018. Um, I'm then going to pass it over to Seth Enos, who will demonstrate those new features. And as I mentioned, we will do Q&A at the end. Uh, we, we don't expect this to take more than um, an hour. So thanks for taking the time to meet with us today. For those of you who may not be utilizing the entire feature set of our solution, um, or if you're new to uh, DTools, welcome, um, I wanted to point out that we can streamline your entire business process from estimation and proposals, through detailed engineered drawings, through purchasing, back office, and project management. Our solution helps you streamline all areas of these businesses from scope and budget with our mobile quote iPad app through the estimation process utilizing our comprehensive data library um, as well as the ability for you to add data and products on your own. Um, this information enables you to generate very detailed and accurate proposals, um, setting locations, assigning systems, and then that information can then be generated into professional looking proposals and documentation. And through our integration with Visio and AutoCAD, you can leverage that same information to generate engineered drawings. So we enable you to generate line diagrams, plan views, elevations, and schematics, all utilizing that same product information that's in the bill of materials. From there, you can generate installation reports such as wire checklists, wire schedules, even generate wire labels for the entire project. We also have with back office and project management, so we can generate purchase orders. So that same bill of materials leverages all of the equipment, so you can generate purchase orders, uh, manage your purchasing process. Uh, we also integrate directly with QuickBooks and other third-party applications so that you can take that project information and bring those into your accounting packages. And then you can utilize our scheduling and project management tools to schedule work orders, service orders, um, manage your technicians in the field through our mobile install app, and then have all of that information flow back into the project so that you can get a clear picture of from the proposal through the system design all the way through installation and further service. So let's look at some of the new features that we've added to SI 2018. Uh, Seth's going to be running through these, so I'm going to really just kind of give a high-level overview of these new features. Uh, we've, we've made a number of improvements to the system, all of which are designed to help save you time, increase your productivity, um, and enhance your day-to-day -day workflow. So we've added security and permissions enhancements to help better protect user data and information within software, uh, within System Integrator, uh, in order to also comply with Europe's new GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation, uh, DTools has enhanced its password rules and enforcement settings to help ensure the security of customer data. 
Um, our compliance includes the ability to um, make stronger passwords, uh, prompt for password resets, um, schedule those prompts, and we've also provided additional system logging um, and improved individual user tracking. Uh, we've also added the ability to account for use tax in both your catalog and your project pricing. And use tax, as Seth will demonstrate, are taxes that are applied to the unit cost of product. Uh, margin and, and markup can include or exclude these use taxes, uh, providing greater pricing accuracy and more flexibility for users in those regions where taxes and use taxes are levied. In terms of catalog management, um, we've added enhancements to help make it easier for you to update your products and pricing within the catalog, um, within your quotes, and within your project. Um, we've integrated with the PSA Security Network um, to include their library of products from within the DTools library. What this means is, if you're a member of PSA, you can go to the data library, select products that you may sell through PSA, and once you log in, um, we can include specific dealer pricing for those products. This is a huge time saver and enables you to at the time of downloading products into your library, also ensure that you have the most updated pricing and your specific pricing for those products. Additionally, we made a number of improvements to our projects, which Seth will show you, uh, such as a new budget field, uh, the ability to create a new project from a template from within the new project wizard, um, the ability to export any current layout including custom views from the project editor to any Excel report. This is a huge time saver. Um, and we've added AutoCAD 2019 support to our drawings, made some improvements to some shapes in Visio, and also improvements to our schematic blocks within AutoCAD so that you can assign color properties um, and change the color of wires, which Seth will demonstrate. Um, and the centerpiece of the work for 2018 is, is really focused around change management. We've completely re-engineered our change order process to enable multiple and persistent change orders. Um, we've introduced project approvals as part of this process, and this really helps accommodate um, all projects with multiple changes, and especially as projects become more complex in scope, um, we realize that the ability to have uh, more than one change order that exists um, within the project is, is, is really a, a key element of success for the long term of this project. So Seth's going to demonstrate um, how we can create multiple and persistent change orders, um, how you can differentiate between internal and external change orders, um, how we've improved the tracking and accuracy, um, and the new reports that go along with that. So overall, we've added over 40 new features and enhancements. All of these are really designed to help you save time, increase your, prop, your, your productivity, and overall increase uh, your bottom line profitability. So I'm going to turn it over to Seth. And he's going to provide an overview of the new features. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Tim. I'll go ahead now and give you a demonstration of, of, the, of the highlights that Tim just spoke on. So here is SI 2018. Uh, the first place I'm going to start is under the control panel. We'll just go there, get this out of the way. And we're going to talk about the user sign-in policies. Uh, this is what he mentioned. We've added uh, enhanced uh, you know, uh, password rules and settings as well as session timeouts. I'll go ahead and launch this. And um, a lot of this work was done uh, to become compliant with the GDPR uh, requirements for the European Union, but they will benefit uh, all of our users. Uh, we've never really enforced any sort of password um, rules at all in our software, other than you have to have a password to log in, but it could be uh, two characters. Um, so we've uh, you know, set a 
something here to require strong passwords. And when you click on one of these options over here, we'll tell you, uh, you know, exactly um, what is required for that or what it's going to entail. Or if you choose something like a session timeout, we tell you what the value must be between. Now, um, there is a link here to set the GDPR defaults for the uh, European Union. So any of our EU clients can just click that. Uh, it will set the defaults. I'll just do that right now just so you see they fill in. Um, but again, uh, anyone outside of the EU, E, uh, e, I'm sorry, EU can pick and choose which one of these, if any, that they want to use. Um, and if you want to just override that and still have an administrator be able to manually set passwords, um, you can check this option as well. And these settings can be transferred to our mobile install and customer portal interfaces if you want to enforce these rules out in those interfaces. So. Um, a lot of work went into this, and uh, it's just something that you know, was kind of uh, long overdue, and uh, GDPR requirements, you know, um, stepped that up a little bit in our timeline. So we have that. Now, part of also the GDPR requirements and just uh, overall enhancements we made had to do with logs. So uh, we've got sign-in logs over here, server exception logs over here. I'll just go ahead and launch one of these so you can see the logs here. Uh, that's just logging in and out of the software. Um, this can be exported if needed, and then server exception logs would be for any errors or anything like that, or um, in this case, I wasn't registered when I launched today, so it gave me this little message. So uh, we did that. Now, we also added some logs in the customer portal. So I'm going to skip real quickly over that just to show those logs. And um, the issue that our users brought up is that after they've you know, published uh, documents out through the customer portal, they may not remember um, which ones they put out there necessarily or what message they sent the client in the email. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't store that information anywhere within the software. So here, when you are logged into uh, the customer portal as an SI user, not obviously as your client logging in, you over here next to your um, uh, settings, you have an option to show a shared documents log. And if you click that, this will show all of the documents that have been published uh, since SI 2018 was released, uh, including the message from the email over here. So you can always reference this uh, when needed. And so that was a, a big request from a lot of people uh, that wanted to see a log out here. So that is now done for this version. Okay. Next big feature that we added uh, was use tax. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that on a product in just a second. But while we're here under the control panel, I'll just show you some of the settings um, that apply. There's actually two of them out here um, where, where they would apply. Number one, your tax settings. So if I launch this, down here at the bottom, you'll see a use tax section. And here's where you can include use tax in margin and markup calculations. You may or may not want to do that depending on your uh, state rules or your country rules. and to clarify here, what use tax is, for anyone that doesn't know, um, especially if you're outside of the U.S., you might call it a purchase tax. But that is tax that you, as the integrator, are responsible for you know, submitting um, based, uh, I mean, to the governing body based on the cost of the item, you're, the, the price you're paying for it, not the price you're selling it for. So you can decide whether or not you want to include uh, the use tax in your margin and markup calculation so it gets rolled over into the price of the item. And again, that may be dependent on rules in your uh, state or country. Uh, by default, this is unchecked. Uh, but we will have a field that you'll be able to see in just a few minutes where you'll see we have a unit cost field like we always have, but then we'll show the unit cost with tax. And so that's the value you get to decide whether or not uh, is included in your margin and markup calculations. The other setting out here has to do with purchase orders. So for our purchase order module, we've changed this name here to purchase order settings. And when you uh, open this now, you'll see there's an option down here for use tax to apply use tax to the purchase orders inside of SI. So um, you may be toggling this on and off depending on um, who you're buying from or what products you're buying from. Um, a lot of you might be tax exempt up front from paying that tax, but you still owe it uh, based on the cost of the item when you, uh, you know, at the end of the quarter or whenever you, uh, send in your, your tax money to your governing agency. So uh, it's up to you whether or not you're going to apply these to your purchase order. Some of you may never use that feature at all. But those are the two settings out here uh, for use tax. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the catalog itself. So if we go here to manage products, this will open up. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up uh, a product here. And when this opens, I'm going to go over to the price tab. So here you'll see that there is a use tax option. And there's a drop down here showing all of the taxes that you have in the software. You could always create a new one here if needed. Notice here the column. 
Now, there's a unit cost with tax. It's just for display purposes only if you apply a tax to the cost. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just apply my normal tax rate of the 7% here. And we've added a prompt here. It says, you have chosen to apply use tax to this product. Do you want to remove sales tax from the product? Once again, depending on your state or country, you may or may not be able to apply sales tax to these items because they were already taxed on the cost. So uh, we threw this in here just as an option. Now, if you don't want to see it, again, you can say, don't show me this again. But if you choose yes on this, it will remove the taxable option and only apply tax to the cost. I'll go ahead and do that just so you can see. That's removed. And now here's showing here the unit cost with the tax. Uh, once again, this goes back to the tax settings. Do you want your margin markup to be based on this value or this value for the cost? Um, so you have those options. And that is our um, use tax integration. And besides this, we also uh, will report. If you look at the, the project summary report, we'll show you the use tax so you have an idea, again, of how much money you uh, owe your um, tax agency your tax body. All right, so while we're here in the catalog, I'm going to talk about the PSA data integration. So here's the add from library option. I'll go ahead and pull this up. And as you know, this is where you download products directly from the DTools library. That's our default um, setting out here. There's also an extended library. There's the portal option that we've had for quite a while now. And this is a new one, the PSA um, security network option. So if we click this, this is going to show all of the data that's available um, for purchase through PSA. Let me go ahead and filter to something here. We'll go to a manufacturer, and I'll scroll down so we see some images here that are displaying. And so what we've done is we've taken the, the products that are available through PSA, and we, we've added them out here, obviously available for download, but we've also cross-referenced them with the DTools library because of the PSA data that we that are provided um, or that is provided to us uh, won't have images with it. Uh, it won't um, have inputs or outputs or height, width, and depth, all of the, the fields that we track. So if we already have these items uh, you know, in the, SI, in the SI library, we cross-reference, we match up the images, and we basically fill in the blanks uh, for you. Now, the advantage of downloading here from the PSA data, if you are a, a PSA member, is that uh, you can set your a pricing update. You can update your pricing anytime directly from PSA, or you can set a schedule to update your pricing. And when I say pricing, that means the MSRP and the unit cost. You, of course, will always be able to set your selling price uh, based on margin or markup or, or however you do that. But you can always get your current pricing um, directly from PSA. Now, you have to register with them, and you're going to have to have, enter your information, um, your access key, and all of that. And once done, if you look at the update pricing here, uh, you have the option to at any time come out and push this button to update pricing uh, on the fly, or you could set a schedule here to update daily, weekly, or monthly. And you get to choose, of course, which price type you want to update if you're using any one of our 12 uh, price types. Um, if you're happy with this, go ahead and hit Save Schedule. and just letting you know that that's been saved. So um, great new feature here, and um, you can look forward to hopefully a lot more um, data out here that's going to have pricing available to you in the future. So uh, PSA was just our first start at that. So that's a, it's a great new feature for any uh, PSA members. All right, I'm going to move over to the project enhancements now. We'll just highlight a few of these. I'll just go over here to the project. Um, just a couple quick things that we did. When you go to create a project now, and you choose new project, you can now, from the new project wizard, choose to create a project from a template. Um, now, you could always do this via the dropdown, but once you were in this wizard and maybe even entered some information and then decided, oh, wait, I want to use a template for this, um, you weren't able to just back out and retain that information. So right now, you could easily just hit create project from template here, and your information would be retained. We also added a budget field. And if you look over here, you can see that there is a budget column now, um, at least in my default view for the Project Explorer, you'd be able to see that. And it's just a reference at this point in time. But uh, we'll, we'll add more functionality to the budget field later on in future releases, like uh, you know notifications if you go above or below, um, sorry, um, above the budget is probably where we'll target that. And um, 
you know, maybe require uh, approval to, to continue on with the project if it goes above budget. But right now it is just a placeholder, but it does, this field does synchronize back from our mobile quote uh, iPad app. That, uh, the app has always had a budget field uh, that will now synchronize back, and if you create a project based off of a mobile quote, uh, that will uh, populate for you. Uh, of course, you can also manually fill this in just as a reference for yourself as you're working on a project. Um, Tim mentioned that we uh, also support AutoCAD 2019 in this release. You know, that's a, just an ongoing effort every time, you know, AutoCAD's going to keep releasing uh, yearly updates, uh, usually a year ahead of time, so 2019 is already out for them, but we have to make sure that our software uh, does still integrate with those. And um, I'll show you another AutoCAD feature in just a second, the, the major one that we changed, but uh, first, let's talk about uh, the new feature, it's, it's, a, it's a simple one in some ways, but it's also very, very powerful and, and just a time saver. So a lot of our users here have been using the, the export option. So you can export from a project. So here's the project editor. They're able to export, let's say, all of the items here. Now you'll notice here you get to pick and choose which columns you want to see in your spreadsheet. You can also uh, include calculated values out of here. Um, again, I'm just scrolling down to show you that there's a ton of these. But each time you go to export from a project, you have to select the fields you want. You know, deselect all these and go through, I just want these, 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 or again, whatever you're choosing. The new feature is this export current layout, which uh, means whatever layout you're on here, I'm, right now I happen to be on the order layout. Uh, I could be on the price layout or even one of my custom layouts. A custom layout that I've defined to show exactly the columns that I want to see you no longer then, when you're exporting, have to choose those same columns. It will just export that current layout. So I know it sounds real simple and all that, but it's just a, a huge time saver and, and a big request from a lot of our users that, that use this function. So that'll, that'll save you all a lot of time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull up AutoCAD now. And any AutoCAD users uh, on the line may notice the difference right away, that my wires that are connected aren't all green. There, there's different colors in here. So that was uh, something that we corrected in this version. We, we made big changes to these schematic uh, wire blocks in our software. They used to be very rigid. You would drop them on the page, they'd be red. You'd make connections, and once they were connected, they would turn green. You had no option of changing those colors. And we know how important it is to label wire colors when you're doing drawings. So as you can see, I've changed quite a few of these uh, colors on here. I left some red, some green, but this is a connected one that's still uh, red because I wanted it to be red. Uh, but you can do this by layer or you can do it by block. So up here I've created some layers in here. Um, and then whatever layer on, as you drop the blocks, uh, it will respect those layers, uh, layer colors, I should say. Um, Brand new feature, and um, it's really going to be exciting for our AutoCAD users because that, that red and green limitation was, um, for lack of a better word, limiting. So this should open it up a little more for, for those users. All right. Having said all that, let me go ahead and minimize this. Let's talk about the big enhancement for SI 2018, and that is our overhaul of change orders. So first thing, first, let's take a look down here. You'll notice there is now a change orders tab. Um, first, I'm going to talk about how change orders worked prior to this. A change order to us was a comparison between revisions, and a change order was simply a report. So the way it worked prior to this version, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, let me make sure I check this project out. So I'm going to just check this one out. That's the one I'll be using as my example. You would come here. Uh, once the job is sold, you, you receive an approval. You would come create a revision. You, you'd have to remember to go do that, create a revision. Um, then you would open the project up to make any changes as change order requests came in, and the changes were made live in the project. If you deleted something, it was removed. If you added something, it was added to the project as if it was real. Uh, then you would compare those two revisions and get a, a, a difference or a delta and then run a, a change order report based off of that, which was simply uh, really a proposal that looked at just the differences, what was removed, what was added. And um, that was the functionality. Uh, it did not lend well to having multiple pending change orders at a time. Um, and you know, listening to our clients, we find out that it's not the case where you just create a change order and it's either accepted or rejected before they ask for other changes. <laughs> so real world scenarios came into this and, and we saw the limitation of that. So just so you guys know, uh, everyone on the line, revisions are still here 
and you can still use them the same way you always have. If you still want to do change orders this way, more power to you, go ahead and do that. But what we've done is we've repurposed them um, in our documentation as well, just to let you know that revisions can now be used while you're bidding on a job uh, to create different options for your clients. Now, many of you were using it that way anyways. It was never designed to work that way, but it, it worked just fine. A lot of you were already doing that. And that's now the intent of revisions when you're not using, um, uh, or if you're going to plan to use our new change order process. You can simply use it in the bidding process, and then when a revision gets accepted, you could uh, you know, clone it as a brand new project and start over from there. We've had that functionality for a while. But as soon as you decide to use our new change order functionality, just heads up here, you will no longer be able to manually create revisions. I just want to make that clear. We lock it down at that point. So when a project is approved, which we're going to discuss here in just a second, you create your first revision of that or, or your, your sold revision, and then moving forward, revisions will be created automatically for you as you approve change orders. That's another new concept, approving a change order here, uh, meaning before the, the changes were live, hoping they get accepted. Now you'll see when I demonstrate this that, that they truly are pending change orders. So, okay, let's start here. Um, this mark is approved, it's a big new feature and it is tied directly to uh, change orders. So I have a project checked out to myself, it's in the estimating status. Um, this used to be called progress, you'll notice we changed that to status. And we're gonna go through a scenario where this job was accepted. We've presented all of the, the great documentation out of SI, the client reviews it, they want to buy this job. They're, they're ready to go forward. So when that happens, you can approve a project. Now, the ability to approve a project and unapprove a project even, uh, it is permission-based. Before that question comes up, I just want to clear that up. It is absolutely permission-based, so you don't have to allow all users uh, this, this ability to approve a project. Maybe you, only PM should do this. So we'll go ahead and approve a project, and here's what's going to happen. We offer to change your status to the first status in your list that is marked as a one. Um, what I mean by that, for anyone not sure, the state here. We have three states that are used in our dashboard feature. Uh, it's open when you haven't won the job, like estimating. Everything else is one, except for when you lose a job, that would be marked as lost. So we're just defaulting to the first one in this list. You could skip that if you want, go straight to design if you want. But we'll leave it at one. And we're going to create a revision of this. So this is where the revisions come into play, and this is what I mentioned. By marking this as approved, I, we're going to take away the ability to manually create revisions after this. Everything has to be an approved change order moving forward to become a revision. Notice we default the text to approved project revision here. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this project as approved. And what it's doing is it's added a little checkbox here. It's been approved. Down here you'll see that a revision was added. And if I come over here, I'm just going to go to this uh, change order option here. Um, there is the ability here that you could create a change order. Now, you won't be able to do anything here with these change orders as far as adding items. So you'll still want to do that within the project, but we do have the functionality here. But this is where all of your change orders uh, will display. And um, to show a change order, let me go ahead and select this. Okay. This opened up here. And uh, notice here this new column showing that it is approved. Uh, all these items, I should say, are approved. Um, there's also a change order filter up here that I'll, I'll get to in a second. But this is the major change. You may have noticed that these items are approved. So in this scenario, let's say we're going to remove some items. We, we, we're going to take out these uh, two speakers and, and the wire associated with them. They're, they're not needed in the project. So you can highlight uh, items and just choose to delete them. This is going to come up and let you know that um, four of the items are approved, as you know, the check mark here. So all of my items, essentially, they're approved. Uh, they cannot be deleted, but they can be marked for deletion on a pending change order. And then it's basically saying here, you'll be prompted to choose a change order. I don't have any change orders yet. It's asking me to create one. So choose yes. And this will open up a form where uh, the default name is change order one. We will auto number these. This will always be one to us in the software. This is change order one. Um, and then there's notes that you could add here. Now, the two radio buttons here, external versus internal, I'll explain what those do. External uh, would be for a client requested change. Money is going to be changing on this job. They either stuff's removing or stuff's being added or a combination of the two. But, but there's legitimate changes based on the original agreement from the client that money could be owed for. On an internal change order, uh, we are assuming those as engineering 
changes, changes you're making to the project that, that aren't going to affect the client, meaning th they're not responsible for, for those changes. So the difference between these two radio buttons, um, when you choose them, if you happen to choose internal and you are um, deleting a product, we give you a warning letting you know that, hey, if, if you do approve this change order, those items will be removed from the project and the price of the project is going to change. The one you've agreed on, it has to change. These are being deleted. When you add items to an internal change order, we offer to mark those items as non-billable. And if uh, you choose to do that, we'll, we'll just not put a price on those items. They, they could still have a cost, mind you. If, if you're adding stuff that you forgot to a job, you may still be responsible for that cost, but the selling price of that item and the labor associated with that item would all be zero dollar values. That's what non-billable does in the software. So we at least offer that. You don't have to do that. You could let it change, but we thought uh, it'd be a nice little prompt for you on internal versus external. So having said all that, our scenario here is, is still, we are deleting items, I'm adding them to a pending change order, change order one, and notice what happened. I'll just go ahead and scroll up a little. Here you can see this symbol appeared, and it says, if I mouse over it, I don't know if you can read that, but it says marked for deletion on CO1, so change order one, and we just strike these through. So they're not truly removed yet. This is pending still. Um, now, the same is true for when you add something. So if I say, you know, lecture hall, audio, video, and I add a screen, for instance, to there. Maybe we're removing the speakers, and I'm going to add a screen here. You scroll down, and I'm going to choose this screen and uh, drag it in. Now, it's asking me, what change order is this going on? Because, again, this is a uh, an addition to an approved project file. We're not going to let you do that unless you add it to a pending change order. So we could either add it to the existing change order, or you can always create a new change order if you want to create multiple pending change orders at a time. But right now, I'll leave it on change order one, just so you see what happens. I just want you to see the green text here, mouse away, and the symbol. So this gets added to the, the bottom of this grouping out here. And again, this is not real yet. This is still pending, hence why it's in a different color and with this symbol. This is all sitting on that pending change order one. Um, now. So what, what does this do? Why did we change all this? Well, we wanted to be able to have multiple pending change orders at once, like I said. But also, sometimes when you're giving options on change orders, the same items may be on two or more pending change orders, and you're waiting for a decision on one of those. So an example uh, of that would be, okay, we, we deleted these and we added a screen. Well, the other option would be we're still deleting these. These are coming out no matter what, but we want to offer them a different screen in the change order perhaps. So I'm going to go through this scenario where I've already have these selected, and I'm going to delete them again. Same prompt as before. Hey, these are approved. You can't do that. You have to add them to a pending change order. You're going to be prompted to pick one. This time when I get here, though, I can see my existing change order. I'll say, let's create another change order, change order two for this. Select it, hit select. Those have now been added to change order two as well. If you mouse over this, again, you may not be able to read that, but it says mark for deletion in change order one and two. Uh, then, of course, I could add something real quickly to make it different. And just to make sure my dollar values, I'll put uh, four screens into the job on change order two this time, just so I have a difference out there. So now I've got these pending on change order two. Um, I do want to point out columns very quickly. So on your layouts, there is a new change orders layout. And if you look here, these additions or these potential additions are listing the CO number, the ceiling green. This is on one. These four items are on two. If I scroll up a bit to the deletions and scroll over, there we go. The CO deleted numbers, one and two, is where these are marked for deletion. So we keep all of that there. There are fields that you can uh, view in, in custom layouts as well, but we do have this default change orders view here as well. All right. So. Having shown all that, um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, this filter. So there's a change order filter here right now. If we look at this, we're displaying approved items by default. So that's mainly the project file, everything that's approved. And then we also have change order one and change order two sitting here in the list. If I just need a, a, a quick view, wait, what's on change order one? You can easily deselect what you don't want to see here. And there is my change order one. This is what we're viewing here. Um, and of course, you can see anything you want. I want to see what's on both change orders. You might want to show your columns for this, of course, to differentiate which ones if they're on multiple. But you do have this ability to uh, filter um, these change orders. You also have the ability to approve or reject 
change orders directly in this project uh, editor from the settings tab there's a change orders option now and here you can see you can mark as approved mark as rejected and here's uh, showing our, our pending change orders this is of course only going to show pending change orders that's one method for approving or um, rejecting change orders uh, but you may not do it directly here um, in the software you may have um, you may want to do it outside so I'm going to show that in just a second last thing while we're here well not last thing um, first thing I'm going to show you here is also what if you change your mind about marking something for deletion we have a new undelete feature up here it only applies to items that have been marked for deletion if you choose this it will just put this back as approved and it will remove it from any of the pending change orders it's back to being approved you can't have that on your change order so um, there's there's that option I also want to mention that once you approve a project all of your pending change orders will have some unique um, what do you want to maybe we'll call it entities inside of, of SI one being scope of work so if I click the scope of work button now this comes up asking me are we opening the scope for the original project or the one for change order one or two so if you want to write a unique scope of work for each one of your change orders you can do that now for instance if I open the change order one this opens up and I can either do a text one or if I'd like to format that I can make it rich text if I want to see the project one, well, I can open this one and this was the one that was originally on this project so you get to pick and choose uh, scopes for or, or should they set a, a unique scope of work for each one of these pending change orders if you choose to do that miscellaneous items are unique per change order as well when you go to add a miscellaneous item here to this project we're going to ask you if that has to go on a pending change order where does this exist also price adjustments now your change orders default to whatever the original project ones were. You can see they're grayed out here for the original project because that's been approved. Each one of my change orders started with a miscellaneous parts adjustment of 5%, but I may not want to do that on a particular change order. And while it's still pending, you can change it. You can zero out the miscellaneous parts if you want or, or increase it. It's up to you. Uh, these are all unique per change order. And this is only when it's pending, of course. Before you run your reports, you can pick and choose what you want to change here. Um, and then last but not least, what uh, got locked down here too uh, are taxes. So uh, hopefully it's not too common a, a use case, but taxes, um, I should go here, sorry, tax settings, there we go. Uh, when this pulls up, you'll notice the project taxes are locked down. Each change order could have its own uh, tax rate here should you decide to change those. So you can come here and choose from the drop down any other taxes that you have in your list. Um, here's where you would manage the project taxes to adjust those. Um, now, again, that's a use case that may come up, hopefully not too often, but if you're doing change orders, you know, um, over, you know, a project that's going on for over a year, taxes may change, and um, you may have to adjust that. It used to be this tax when we sold the job, and now it's 8.5%. Um, I don't think taxes ever go down. I think they're just going to go up, <laughs> but wouldn't that be cool? All right, so... Um, we're still sitting here with two pending change orders. I just wanted to show you everything in this interface before I, I left it for now. Uh, I'm going to close and save the project. It's very likely what you, you may do, you, um, you, you probably want to present these as well to your client. So I'm going to show you a method for doing that. Let me just save the project, but I'm not going to check it in. I just wanted to take you back here to this change order tab. Now you can see that it is populated with change order one and change order two. They are sitting here with a status of pending. You do have your mark is approved mark is rejected functionality here and I'm gonna go ahead and just launch change order one from here this will open now this is just a little message saying hey by the way we're basically opening the project file but we filtered it to display just the items on change order one via that change order filter I showed that earlier that's all we're really doing here still opening the project file just showing you the pending stuff for that If you need to adjust that as you're working here go ahead but when you are filtered to a change order here you can run your reports that will only display what's on this change order so let's talk about that prior to SI 2018 you would use revisions again to create change orders you'd run a compare via revisions and on the re a project compare editor there was a reports tab with a change order button it's the only place in our software where you saw the word change order and it was simply a report our default being a proposal that said change order at the top of it versus proposal um, we don't do that anymore uh, in this version we got rid of the change order tab even if you still compare revisions you will not have a change order uh, tab anymore for your reports but 
before anybody freaks out, don't worry. If you had custom change order reports, which many of you do, when you can uh, upgrade to SI 2018, we just move your custom reports over here underneath the client list. You run them just the same as you always would. No worries, just go to the client button for them. There will no longer be a change order button and you will not lose your custom change order reports. But for those of you that are new or, or don't have custom change order reports, um, all you have to do when you have a project here filtered to a change order, which is exactly what this is, it's filtered to change order one, you can choose to run any one of our proposals the quote report or any line item detail report here, and we will replace the name on the cover page or at the top of the report from line item detail proposal or quote to change order automatically for you. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to customize. So if you're just running, say, a stock proposal with images, for instance, uh, by location, let's go ahead and run that. You'll notice when this does pop or generate the report that it says change order here along the top. So that's what we've, we've automatically set that for you. Uh, but again, if you still want to customize reports that hard code the word change order on top, uh, uh, go ahead. Absolutely. They'll still be here. But this is what a uh, the functionality we added for this version is to automatically change that name. Now, um, if you want to uh, change it from change order to something else, a lot of international clients call them variations versus change orders. Uh, just come here and you can change that wording right here of what will display when you are running a proposal, line item detail, or quote, when filtered to a change order. So hopefully that was clear. Um, that's how I wanted to show you how to run reports. And the same would be true uh, if you go to run a scope of work. If you're filtered here, it would run the scope for that particular um, change order. Now, if you're not filtered and you go to run a change order report, just a heads up. I'm sorry, and you go to run a scope of work report, we'll just say run and close. This is where we're going to ask you, well, do you want to run it for the project, change order one or change order two? So I'll just close out of that uh, because I was not filtered. It knew what to do. All right, let's go ahead and close out of the uh, this change order for right now. Do I want to check in the project? No. I'm just going to go back here to show you that these are still both pending. Let's talk about approving and, and rejecting a change order. So um, if you recall my example um, from earlier, that we had a um, two deletions, or you know, well, four deletions, the two speakers on the wire with them on both of these change orders. So both of these are pending. They both have the same deletions. So what happens here if I decide to approve change order one? Let's mark it as approved. Of course, what we're going to do right now is offer to create the next revision in the list for you. We let you know that this is an approved change order one. Hit mark as approved. Generally. That would be it. It would mark it as approved, nothing else to do. But since there are existing items um, on change order two that, that were just approved on change order one, we kind of give you a heads up here. Basically, the price of change order two will change because the items are truly being deleted from the project. They're already gone. You can't delete them twice from a project. So if you're not going to reject the other change orders that we list up here, in this case, change order two, if you're not going to explicitly reject that, maybe there's stuff still pending in there you're waiting for a decision on, you might want to regenerate those reports for your clients and represent those to them because the, the deletions are no longer valid on that. They've been removed in change order one, the one you agreed to. So that's the heads up you get here. We'll just say yes. Um, you'll just notice here, this gets marked as approved. Uh, and in my example here, I'll just go ahead and select this and mark it as rejected just to make sure we do that. Let's reject that. That removes those screens that I added there from the actual project file up here. And if I didn't mention it before, the mark is approved and mark is rejected options here, those are permission based as well, just like the project. So you don't have to allow all users to be able to uh, mark project as approved or as rejected. And um, that is my presentation on the new features of SI 2018.